Oh no, my water. Oh god, your water shaking around. Shaking. It didn't spill though, so that's pretty good. It's because I didn't fill it to the top. <clears throat> hey everybody on hey, the team. Yeah. Hey, YouTube. Yeah. Hey, wow. YouTube. How you doing, YouTube? <laughs> hey, 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 we're here now. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? D I think you're deaf. I don't think. I know. That, uh, it's hard to tell. You're handicapped. It's just, you're just deaf. Welcome to the show. That still sounds kind of deaf. I was going for retarded, but that didn't work. Anyway, no, you just it just it just came out deaf. Um, it comes out deaf. You're indefinitely deaf. Indefinitely. How's it going, Channing? I'm good. How are you? How was how was your day off? Um, you it was played good. Some pool in a, yeah. a town that I'd never heard of. Yeah, no tie. N O T I. No tie. I thought that that was like a Chinese restaurant or something <laughs> where they're just like, no Thai food here. Oh, no Thai over <laughs> no here. No Thai, sorry. No Thai food. We only have Chinese. <laughs> Chinese and you play pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> tiny little Chinese restaurant with a pool table in it. So we just, just one, pool. just one pool table one right pool. in the middle, and then there's like a Chinese buffet all around it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like really ancient Asian people oh, just watching you. Don't hit eight ball into chow mein. <laughs> That's no oh, good. Fucky. <laughs> oh no, I hate the nine ball. Their pool table just sucks. It's just all greasy yeah. from fucking food getting on it, and on it, and rice everywhere. Um, we should stop doing this podcast and go get a business loan because this sounds fantastic. <laughs> this is a great business idea. <laughs> yeah. We need to find some Asians and a shitty pool table. Yes. They have to be really old and speak no English. Yeah. Yeah. This is, sounds like a business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Sounds like you could probably bullet point that for a successful business, no yes. less. Let's It'll go to a bank. They'll they'll do it. I know. Don't you usually have to pitch them an idea too? Right? You have to, yeah, you have that's to be, the business <laughs> plan. Is <laughs> right? the idea? Yeah. Well, we already pitched it. I mean, I pitched it to you, and you kind of were spitballing yeah. with me, and it yeah. seems pretty much set. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what more we could do. We'll just do. show them this video. <laughs> yeah. And say, well, what do you think could, about our idea? We could do a pitch right now, but just watch this instead. We'll do weekly pool tournaments with one table, mm -hmm. and they'll just play really slowly and take forever. And everybody just stands around the buffet, just snacking <laughs> on Chinese food while they're waiting just, to play. They just have the, the bowl and the chopsticks with noodles, and they're just, like, slurping it up as people are playing, <laughs> and they're staring at them. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. Yeah. Well, welcome we to Fleeting Thoughts, everybody. Yeah. This yeah. Is, welcome to the new this podcast. Is, the, uh, is it new? <laughs> yeah, well, it's new. Every time we do something different, it feels like a totally new yeah. thing to well, me. Well, this is a very yeah. nice new setup. Yeah. It's, it's a little it's a little weird to just look I like right it. across the table at you. Yeah, I feel more focused mm -hmm. uh, on your face and on uh, the microphone in front of you. It's getting lost in your eyes. <laughs> That's what's going on here. We're just going to start making out. <laughs> leaning closer. We also closer. have to remember there's listeners, and yeah. they only listen. I think most of the people mostly listen to it. but It's true. Well, even I think if they watch it on YouTube, they probably just minimize it and yeah. do something else while they're listening to it. They don't watch How it. How dare they minimize our efforts? <laughs> I mean, like, not metaphorically, like physically. Yeah. Digitally. Hit, hit the little minus button in the the upper right corner there and just I drop it down. I refuse to believe that that's the case. I don't think okay, so. Okay, then they open a second tab. Whatever helps <laughs> yeah, you sleep yeah. at night. <laughs> as long as it's still a big, a big window. Right. Um, yeah, I uh, I think I have about 10 of the episodes up on YouTube. Uh, I know, you've been, with you've the been hammering them out pretty quickly. So. Yeah, I had to take a break because I'd been doing so much of it and... Uh, I was just like, I want to. I, I just need to like chill out and stop like yeah. just doing that every day off. I was just like <laughs> creating these little files. Well, eventually you'll get them. just get caught up, and then you won't have to do it anymore. Yeah, because I mean, if you're already at like ten episodes in, then you're over halfway there. Yeah, yeah, and I have like a template now, so it's essentially just the same pictures because I don't have video for that stuff. So, mm -hmm. and then uh, I just did the one with uh, Zach. I edited the the video and I added his uh, song at the beginning and at the end. Oh, cool! Uh, one of his songs. So, cool. um, I was just I I liked the music and I thought mm -hmm. it worked well with the video and yeah, um, well, people can get a little sample of what he does. Yeah. Um, while I listen, so that's exciting. Yeah. Um, how did you like our last episode, personally? I thought it was pretty well. Yeah. Um, be honest. No, I mean, like, uh, Zach was, Zach, I mean, Zach talked quiet. Yeah. But, I mean, no, I don't know. It seemed fine to me. Yeah. Um, I think the next time we have a guest on, we should maybe throw questions at them before we have them on so they can maybe think of... That's a good idea. ...more elaborate answers and aren't so nervous. Um, I think he was a little bit, uh... Yeah. 
Not it's really. weird to have all the, the, you know, the video, the audio, yeah, yeah. people sitting there staring at you. You know, and you know, he's never been to my house, and um, so I could, I could see being. I mean, I get nervous. I was nervous just doing that. Oh, really? I, was, I was like excited. I was like, um, just overly, like excited to get into it, and I just kind of like rammed my way through the conversation in my like while mm-hmm. I was doing it personally yeah. I was like um I wasn't really there as far as like I can't barely remember any of it like because <laughs> I was just, just so on a fucking excited. I was on a train track of um <laughs> Like I had been preparing in my head what it was going to be like, and so I just sort of like rushed into it all. Um, so listening back on it, I was like super self-conscious and thought I was terrible. Um, and I'm sure it's not that bad to people who aren't me, but probably not. Like I said I, I didn't really notice. Like I yeah. wasn't thinking to myself, "God, what a fucking asshole!" It's just railroading this poor guy. Yeah, I could sense that he was a little bit. Um, apprehensive uh, and i didn't know you know what kind of a flow we were going to get into so i sort yeah. of just manufactured one <laughs> like by just steamrolling my way through the whole thing <laughs> there you, anyway, well there you go we, uh, learning uh, the best way to get things done is just to do it yourself <laughs> yeah just, I'll, just, <laughs> just I'll just take over don't worry about it let's interview myself <laughs> yeah. if you just want to give me part of an answer i'll fill in the blanks for you <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much what it was. It was like, oh yeah, and then I I go to college, and then I'm just like, oh yeah, well you know this is going on in college, and this is college, and this is, this is my experience, and fuck college. I don't like. It. And I didn't even like give him a chance to be like, no, I I like college. Uh, you know, I'm getting a lot. Of, like I didn't. Even give him a chance. It, it was pretty terrible interviewing. So I'll just have to do better next time. Well, you don't work for a newscast, so nope, <laughs> not yet. Is that how you? Uh, this is gonna be my uh, my uh, resume interview. My audition. Is it? This oh, is. Nice. This one. Oh, this one. Okay. I'm doing well on this one so far. <laughs> so far, yeah. Well, know. you're not really interviewing anybody. It's more of just a mutual one-on-one conversation. That's um, true. It's not you railroading somebody about their life. No, but... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, at the top of the show, I did want to mention uh, and thank all the listeners who do listen to us mm-hmm. and the people who watch on YouTube. Uh, we've done uh, 17, 18 episodes by now, and I really appreciate that people are still downloading them. Yeah, uh, that's, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's not really growing in downloads, but uh, at least a core group of people are at least enjoying them regularly. So, so we just need to not fuck up. Yeah, so we don't lose. The yeah. core. Yeah, don't lose the core. Once you rip the heart out of this podcast, yeah. what's left? It's like Iron Man without his... Uh, his little chest piece, his little, little glowy thingy. His little glowy thingy of science and, <laughs> and uh They never really explain vision. what that is. It's just like a magnet, isn't it? To keep the no, shrapnel from... No, it's a it's an electromagnet, but it's also a mini nuclear reactor that powers him. Oh. Powers his suit. It's been a while since I watched I don't know how he can handle being having it in him while he's not radiation. In yeah, thing, in the right? radiation thing uh, is what like it goes through his veins. I don't think there's a lot of science in those uh, superhero movies, to be honest. No, those guys just I think they just make that shit up yeah. on the fly. They're just like, well, you can't just have a suit. Yeah, he's yeah. got a he needs like a glowy center <laughs> thing right here. He can't. What powers this suit? Yeah. What powers the sun? What, what makes it special Superman. that he can only be the one with the suit? Um, it's a thing that glows, uh, and he's the only one that knows and he's has got it. A, he's got a bad ticker. His ticker, he's got a bum yeah, ticker. Yeah, he's got a bum ticker. So it's like a pacemaker. Why are we talking like old <laughs> He's Jew an old man. Guys. It's uh, yeah. the old Jew guy making the, uh, <laughs> the script up. That seems pretty accurate. Probably. Only Jews work in Hollywood. Crap. That's a f- actually a fact. I read it in No, book. it's uh, 100%. Mm-hmm. It's real. I snoped it. Sno- snoped. snoped? You never heard of Snopes? Snopes is no. a website that uh, fact checks things. Like, um, like uh, are there um, poisoned apples during Halloween? Or um, was this story true? Um, like, did Lady Gaga really murder 12 elves in a hamper? Jesus Christ, did she? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. I'm guessing not. Well, but you know that Snopes. kind of stuff. But you go to Snopes.com and they will... Uh, I'm going to check that out. You, you just type something in. It's like Google, but... Yeah. Well, you'd have to have like a specific article or some type oh. of uh, event that you're trying to find out if it really happened or... Have you ever asked any did, Bible questions? Did Jesus I've never actually gone really? to the website. No. I don't even know if it really exists. But um, <laughs> I thought you went there and no, then it no, was no. a real thing. I've just heard people oh. like, oh, I, I went to Snopes or they go to Snopes. I listen to other people All right. uh, and do it. Are you going to look it up? I'm, g- I'm going to look it up now. Sweet. 
Um, why don't we? Uh, while I'm pulling this up. Why don't you uh, get the throw that throw that word out there that you brought to the table? Literally, I can say brought to the table. Oh my it's god! A literal yeah. thing now. God damn it! Oh man, this is exciting. I like this. Um, just for the listeners, we do uh, uh, video recordings of these uh, podcasts, and they're on YouTube. Uh, check them out. Uh, just look up Fleeting Thoughts, and we have a channel. But uh, we actually set up a, a little table, and um, we have the microphones in front of our faces like normal. Um, but you can uh, check it out. I think it looks a little bit better than before. Um, but yeah, my word uh, is pedant. Pedant? Pedant. Pedant or pedant? Pedant. pedant. Because uh, I was looking up like the pedantic? word pedantic, but pedantic is a uh, derivative of the word pedant. Um, and uh, pedant is a noun, which is a person who is excessively concerned with minor details and rules or with displaying academic learning. So uh, to be pedantic is to be like a pedant, which is a person. <laughs> so it's almost like you're just calling someone that kind of a person by calling by saying what they're doing is pedantic. Um, the only thing I ever ever heard that in was the Family Guy episode where Peter's trying to prove that he's not mentally retarded, and so he just imitates because somebody on like a TV show he's watching mm-hmm. says mm, that was shallow and pedantic, and so mm-hmm. then he just starts using that to oh, describe everything in his life. Saying everything is pedantic. Yeah, it seems somewhat like a pretentious word to use. Oh, this story is quite pedantic. Or you're pedantic? Somebody's pedantic. Pedantic, pedantic. <laughs> I just like saying it, I think. It's a fun um, word. This just it's, write a song. Oh, it's a pedantic song. Quite sorry. pedantic. <laughs> like every the song. British villain or something would need to use that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm asking would, Snopes if Nazis actually killed Jews. Oh, yeah. that's a. I've been curious. Um... Like once or like over and over, like maybe during a particular oh, man, point I, in history. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. They they, they really are. This is. Yeah. Um, it seems like it's just like a normal search engine kind of, but it's just uh, organized a little bit differently. But you just you, you do ask it a question, and then it just pulls up a series of articles that uh, <laughs> what does that answer say? the question. Uh, essay? F- I can't read it. It's too small. Oh. Uh, um, the top one is, did Herman Goering proclaim that although the people don't want war, they can always be brought to the bidding of their leaders? I don't I don't know what that has to do with Nazis. I think that Jews, it's but. such a um, like an obvious like question that they probably don't have like essays like of major Holocaust deniers. I think it would have been better had they had they not given me any articles and just been like, dude, are you fucking serious? Like that's the, yeah, that that's response. the answer. Like, I really, come on, man. Of course they did. Like if you ask Google what is two plus two, it'll just say four, and like that's the whole page. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that. Case. No, it's they, like they, a they whole give bunch you of like ten afterwards. million search results on yeah. why two plus two equals mm-hmm. four. All the different articles and essays, <laughs> studies on that. I mean, why is two plus two four? Oh Can you really prove it? God, is it real? What is two? What What's is plus? What's plus? <laughs> what does it mean, man? The What's equal sign's just two bars, one, <laughs> one on top of the other, bro. Don't mean nothing. What's a bar? Whoa! <laughs> um, it's like a Bill and Ted's yeah. third adventure. Bill and Ted uh, go to math class. Just, yeah. Um, well, anyway, so pedantic or pedant was mm-hmm. your word. And the one I have brought to our fancy picnic table is sedality. Whoa. I know. Whoa. Sedality. Sedality. Is that where you, um, let me, before you tell it, let me Oh, guess. no, yeah, no, I love, gotta, I like, I, I, I think it's fun to guess the definition before you hear it. Sedality. Is that when you kill someone with salad in Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> No, that'd be salatity. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it again? Sedatity? Sedatity? <laughs> what? It's sedality. 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 Mm. Not sedatity. Is that um, the study of sitting on one's bum? No, but that that'd be would sitology. be. I bet you there's a whole study just fucking sitting? dedicated Chairs. to that. Probably. Yeah. Like to maximize the comfort. On your chair. <laughs> on your mic, there's a little hair. It's really tripping me the fuck out. Can you please deal with that? Is that <laughs> Thank it? You. Yeah, Did you I got get it. it? All yeah. right, cool. Well, was I a hope really it was small a, one. Yeah, it was really. It was bright and white in my eye, like other things. <laughs> <laughs> Just go on. Sodality. Sodality. Uh, uh, it's spelled S O A. 
I fucked up the spelling. It's right in front of me. S O D A L I T Y. Sodality. Soda. It's uh, about soda. Pop. Nope. Soda pop. No. No. Not even close. It's about, it's a, uh, it's about, it's like, it's a story. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's the tale of woe of a uh, little can of soda. Um, no, it means fellowship or comod- comradeship, comradeship, comradeship. <laughs> I wanted to say commodity. Com- <laughs> commodity. It's God a, damn it. Friendship as a commodity. Yes. Uh, but it means fellowship. Fellowship. So mm-hmm. it should have been called the sodality of the ring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what, yeah, no, I that's why I looked at it. I was like, God, <laughs> fucking Tolkien is just fucking things up. It's such a better title. He's than, so lazy. Yeah. The fellowship. Ooh, what a, might as well call it a brotherhood. Yeah. Like uh, of assassins. The brotherhood of the ring. The sodality of the ring. That just sounds like dark. Yeah, it does. Um, like that. They that's going places it's that are not good. Probably Mordor. <laughs> probably, probably to a place called Mount Doom. I don't Mount know. You can't Doom. be much more literal than that. Is it Doom or Dune? It's Doom. Doom, which I think is hilarious because he that. gives these crazy names to all these other places, <laughs> yeah. and then just yeah. Mount Doom yeah. and fucking Mordor, Gadriel and fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. Lutheral, Mithril. <laughs> <laughs> I, made up, I made that one up. I made that part up. Oh, right. uh, Mithril is a word he made up. Um, Mount Doom, Mount, don't go there, <laughs> girlfriend. It's funny how he would have like crazy names for things, but then you would have the Misty Mountains. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, thank you. Thanks yeah. for describing those Well, mountains. maybe he went through and decided who named them. Like, and if it was someone who was dumb, he, would, like, he just picked <laughs> this not group a creative that was really guy. dumb. And they were like, no, they would call, he would, they would call the Misty Mountains. It's probably the, the race of men. They were just Misty like, Mountains is obviously a porn name, right? A uh, girl porn. Misty Mountains with big boobs, <laughs> right? I guess you could. I guess Misty. you could take it that. Last name's Mountains, big boobs. It's her stripper name. We were talking about uh, porn names uh, at the pool hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a pool hall. It's a bar in no Thai. Uh, which is not, which is not a Chinese restaurant. Which is not a Chinese restaurant where they don't have Thai food. Um, and uh, a couple of the players on my team, were, they have, we've made up porn names for each other. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, one of them is Girth Brooks. Gosh, One of them is Thrust and Howl. I don't really get the howl part, maybe because it's like loud. And then mine is Beef Merlot. Beef Merlot. Mm-hmm. I uh, I got those. By yeah, way. I did buy a couple of those Beef Merlot. Oh, the Beef Merlot ones. That's yeah, a I haven't tried them yet. Yeah, they're, uh, for those who don't know, Beef Merlot is the name of a, a healthy <laughs> yeah. chase. Yeah, I didn't make it up. Chase I just choice. It. Healthy chase. Healthy chase. It's a healthy choice steamer thing. And yeah, it's like a TV dinner basically. But uh, they have a flavor called beef Merlot. Yeah. So is it good? I haven't tried it yet. I just oh. I I bought like one of them because I was like eh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I didn't want to get it because one I never get the beef ones. I never get the steak ones, and um, I don't like wine in foods. Like I don't like the flavor. Typically, oh yeah, it unless have, it's like, a really wine subtle sauce. on like a steak or something in a sauce. But sometimes it can be um, a little bit uh, bitter fermented tasting like because well like something tells wine. me since it's in a two dollar tv dinner that they probably didn't use high-end <laughs> wine to make their probably, sauce yeah. yeah it's probably not real beef it's like a oh god what could it be i don't even want to know it's like I'm on the back it says it. N- not real beef not real merlot <laughs> <laughs> it's not real food at all yeah, actually it's, it's, uh, it's cardboard that it's we <laughs> uh, we just <laughs> we made a uh, flavored cardboard we just soak put, it just sprinkled vitamins in it so that you uh feel good about <laughs> <your> eating <laughs> <laughs> we put a little protein in it i don't know where we get the protein it's uh some kind of whey or something <laughs> they just they come in with magic dust and they sprinkle it on there and i just i don't ask questions <laughs> they, they, i don't know who these why are they here <laughs> Who are they? Hey, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to make a a little cardboard business here. Trying to make some food, and they just come in and fucking put their beef sauce on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think that's how that works. Um, what but yeah, beef sauce. Yeah, I haven't eaten beef steak. More than maybe once or twice, any beef, any not beef <laughs> in your whole life. No, no, in the last like six or seven months since I started this diet thing, I just don't eat red meat anymore. I haven't and, either. Uh, I just eat a lot of chicken. Yeah, yeah, a, lo- a lot of chicken. A lot, a, <laughs> a lot of fucking chicken. too much chicken. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Have you watched uh, the Kroll show with the too much tuna? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Oh, it's too much tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh? How much tuna is that? <laughs> it's too much tuna. <laughs> I love those guys. It's one of my yeah. favorite uh, things. I didn't like that um, 
skit for a long time until I watched it a bunch of times. That's like one of my favorite and ones. It, the yeah. only one that doesn't get the only one that gets on my nerves is the uh, publicity. The, the pub, yeah, the I publicity love that one. It's one so is. funny. They're so dumb. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are dumb. That's yeah. the whole point. It's just I don't know. It's not funny to me. It's just annoying. Like, oh, I'm just really? Like, Ugh. I think it's funny because it's it's Nick Kroll as a girl, and he does it so committedly mm-hmm. that I just it's it's just fun to watch uh, him do that. But I like everything that Nick Kroll does for the most part. I like how you said everything and then followed that up with. For yeah, the I didn't. Most part. I didn't want to you commit said everything to it. and then I think psychologically you're like, oh fuck, I really just. No, made I was a big thinking there might be something that I didn't like. <laughs> so now you anyway. got to put in for the most part. I'll give him a ninety-five percent. Well, that's pretty good. Ninety-five percent. I like what he does. I don't, yeah, I don't think that there's anybody I would commit one hundred percent to my likenings. That's tough. I don't think that would make any sense. Then you're not being very critical, probably. Yeah. Or you're just really easily amused by the same person. Or maybe they're just a genius for you in particular. Mm-hmm. They're your they genius. Just, uh, they're like your muse. Yeah. But you, just, they you don't, daydream about them and yeah. write poetry. And You're just obsessed with them. Oh, Nick Kroll. Justin Bieber is Took my 100%. Justin Bieber? Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've listened to one entire song by Justin Bieber. I don't know if I've listened to half of the song by Justin Bieber. I don't think I've I've just seen either. his face a lot. I think I've just heard like little clips, but I've never... Yeah, just, right. I you might just listen to the whole song. Every once in a while, I think you just have to go on YouTube and really culture yourself. You just gotta <laughs> on YouTube. That's yes. how we get cultured. Yeah, no, because you just watch music videos. You can watch uh, Miley Cyrus music videos and some Justin Bieber ones. Now really I have watched a few Miley Cyrus. Immersed ones. yourself in the, that culture and uh, the, the, the new popular music that all the kids like. But maybe, you, maybe, you maybe might I, find that you fucking love Justin Bieber. Like yeah, he just I'm really sure. speaks to you on some kind of level. Yeah, like on a fourteen-year-old level. I think he's See, like eighteen. I, was gonna say, I don't think he's fourteen Whatever. anymore. He was. It's funny how like a celebrity starts off young, and then in your mind they just stay that age for like ten years. Yeah, they're just where they were. And then suddenly you look at them and you're like, oh Jesus! Like they're yeah. my age now. They somehow like they Hermione, caught up to me in years. Hermione uh, Granger from Emma Watson. Uh, Emma Watness. Yeah. Uh, Watness. Watness. <laughs> Watness. <laughs> And what to the Watness? Um, she, you know, starts off, you know, as like mm-hmm. uh, like a twelve year old in those movies, and now she's like twenty um, something probably, or yeah, I think 18, she's 19, like 20. twenty, early twenties probably. She's uh, she she's really grown up before our eyes into just a, I know a wonderful, young but you lady. can't have sexual thoughts about her because it's weird. Why not? Huh? Why is it weird? You you were like twenty when she was twelve. So what? I'm not 20 now, and she's not 12 now. I know, but I think in the I back of your mind... I get what you're saying, but <laughs> I don't think it's weird to want to have sex with a 21-year-old, beautiful, rich, smart girl. Yeah. She's also a feminist, so good luck yeah. with that. No. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, because <laughs> feminists don't like to have sex, ever. They it's don't know so what like it's about. Men. It's too. They don't like to just submit to a penis. No, because once they give in, it, that's, they, they, they shut have to the give door it up. behind them. Yeah, they have to give it over. up in both ways. That's an incredibly one-sided look at yeah. feminism. Right he for there. she. Mm-hmm. He, he, she. He, she for he, he. He, she for he, he. I don't even... What? <laughs> he, um, her thing is the she for he. It was like hashtag he for she. And mm-hmm. it's where men are supposed to go out of their way to stop uh, sexism. Even if they're not sexist. Mm-hmm. Or, or I think it's an implication that all men are sexist and we just have to really watch what we say. Because it's for her. Mm-hmm. We have to do things for her. Uh-oh. It's he for she. Well, that's why not, can't they do things on their own? I thought women wanted equality. That yeah, wouldn't be isn't equality. That I, that's not equality. Equality that's, that's is a tricky them. thing because it. I get into. Uh, it's a really sword. I, I, I make fun of Vanessa all the time because she t- she's like talks about equality, but. Do they really want that? Then she'll be like, oh, you got to go first. You're the man. And then I'm like, what? You're always talking about equality. We won't always just go at the same time. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I think that they want equality when it uh, benefits them, them, the enemy. Yeah, well, I think feminism started off because they were being, um, they were being like left out of places mm. in the workforce, and they, they were vote. there were no, certain big deal. yeah people were not letting them do certain things, and they couldn't vote, you know, and all that. But um, it's what it's turned into is they essentially are equal, but they, I mean, like there aren't any actual discrimination laws against women, so I don't really understand how it's my job or anyone else's job to have them succeed in any particular way. They need to go through, you know, work hard and they can succeed. Yeah. Plenty of women have. So I don't really understand where the feminists are now and why they think that this this system is geared against them. I don't I don't see it. I, I just 
you know, well, you wouldn't say you're a man. You no, know, I know. You that's what I, 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 I don't know what it's like to be a woman. So, I mean, maybe there's something to it. Maybe it sucks. It'd be awful. But if you want to, um, you know, if they want to work, they can work. That's it. Yeah. They, and they do. I would never want to be a woman. Yeah. You have to, like, I think bear children and well, you they have, have a to. whole biological mess that they got to deal with, menstrual cycles and... yeah. No thanks. Maybe that explains the the anger. It's just the whole menstrual cycle. <laughs> Maybe it is. This has turned into a really sexist, like specific, <laughs> like stereotypical. Like, yes. oh, maybe it's just they're they're on the rag all the time. <laughs> that's uh, um, well, there that's we go. Very nuanced. Mystery solved. Yeah, uh, we figured it out. They're just fucking unhappy. Yeah, <laughs> just put a cork in it. Shut um, your mouth. I can't understand feminism from a position of male um, entitlement because my mom is has a doctorate and is a superintendent of a massive portland school Mm -hmm. so my mom is like a majorly powerful female and has always been um you know furthering her education working really hard so i never like grew up thinking like that a male was like above or be you know like so I don't I don't understand that perspective necessarily. Yeah. I don't either. I don't I don't understand why you wouldn't just be nice to everybody. Just Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't see like what every like, all this enough. shit just boils down to, well, why don't you just fucking be nice and respectful to people? That's all you got to do. Like Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with race or sex. Just be a good nice person. Right. If somebody's a jerk to you, then just ignore them and walk away. Like that's all you got to do. Yeah. Well, they want to make it into a systemic problem. That way it's vague and there isn't any evidence to fight after. Like, what's the goal? What's the goal of feminism? If it is to get the vote, they've already got that. If it's to um, get into the workplace, they already got that. They can go into whatever the jobs they want. Mm. So what is the goal of feminism? Is it so that they make more money than men? Because that's not equal. Is it that they can do things men can't, like get um, their health, uh, their reproductive health care stuff, like um, um, birth control paid for them? Mm-hmm. That's not equal. Well, because I don't have my birth control paid for me. It's true. You have to buy your condom. Yeah. So why? So, I mean, or is it so that w- single moms can get, you know, paid for every child that they have and not need uh, a man or another woman or someone else to help support them because they can get welfare? Is that equal? Is it, Are there an equal amount of men and women on welfare? You know what I mean? So that what, what I don't I just don't really know where yeah. the, the lines are and all that. I don't really care that much. My new theory that I just came up with is that maybe feminism or people who are feminists are really communists. Equality. They just want to get the same shit that everybody's got. Without putting <laughs> any other words. You're saying it like it's a joke, but that's absolutely that thinking. The thinking of um getting other people to pay for your stuff is communistic in mm-hmm. that you it's like we all have like you don't get to have more money than i do so give me your money but that's that's fucking horrible and communism has never <laughs> been a particularly successful political uh i'm surprised a, that nobody alignment. i wonder if anybody's used that against them at, at, at some feminist rally somebody's just like well y'all just well, communists how do you think they're going to react when you call all <laughs> women communists no you're not calling all women just the ones who are just the ones who are acting like it or yeah <laughs> who are Saying yeah. and wanting things that are yeah, it's very like communist. Uh, you know, communism and socialism is all about um, uh, wealth distribution and making everyone pay for everyone else, as opposed to capitalism, which is just you work hard, you get a job, you get to keep your money, you get to spend your money on what you want. As long as you pay your taxes simple. and well, that would be you know in a in the nor- yeah, but everyone has to pay taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and communism and socialism is the highest form of taxation that's everything is taxed Mm -hmm. everything is owned by the collective and not by the individual communism is just like a higher step of socialism we should try it for one year yeah do a place that has communism and um, check it out get a feel for it um uh china was communistic Mm -hmm. uh a long time ago and then in the last like 50 years they've gone more capitalistic and they've boomed their economy has gone crazy their standard of living has gone way up um so i think that's you know there isn't a lot of like communist dictatorship type situations <laughs> that are working out pretty well and then you have um the nazis which they were called the national socialist party socialism as in they were trying to control the wealth and the economy completely so that doesn't work out too well i wonder if at any point the nazis were just misunderstood 
Um, I don't think so. That was a joke question. I yeah, don't think I don't that. <laughs> I think uh, Hitler did a pretty good job of explaining himself. <laughs> he was uh, pretty he direct. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think he was very. He probably used a lot of metaphors and a lot of uh, manipulation language. So he probably wasn't super direct. Like we just are gonna kill all the Jews. He like made a case for like why they were inferior, and then they're gonna, you know, and then they just ended up, you know, like after a while, putting murder. putting camps and yeah, gas. they started with putting them in camps, just like. We put Japanese people in camps during the same time. So mm. it's not like the putting people in camps thing was just like a no, can't do that. It wasn't, we uh, totally did that. It wasn't tied to the Nazis is what you're saying, as America had their own concentration camps. No, I'm saying that like, yeah, like any kind of manipulative uh, regime is going to, you know, use language in a way that... <sighs> Man. No, Japanese guys, this is not a commune, or it's not a concentration yeah. camp. Yeah. It's a... It's a temporary uh, alternate living situation. Uh, we'll pay just for everything. Yeah, don't, don't worry about, about it. it. Uh, you know, Think I don't care if you had a job or friends or family <laughs> or money, uh, but you're going to hang out in this caged area like a chicken. Because you could be a spy. We don't know. We don't even We're know. We're saying it. you are. We can't even tell the difference between Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. I know. So just if, just if their play. eyes were kind of squinty, yeah. they just went in a camp. Just, like you know how many high people? You know they were just smoking <laughs> weed that day. They got their squinty eyes with their little tiny little. Oh shit! What happened here? That was a high Asian. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> or people. Anyway, uh, I don't know where just, that was going. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know either. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I went Australian on it. On you. <laughs> well, if you were, if he was a squinty-eyed Australian, he was probably in a camp. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm not no Jap. Oh, fuck me. Um, Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> I, can't, I can't use the Australian accent without saying Outback Steakhouse. That's Damn. very American of you. You just yeah. <laughs> you have to. Uh, what, they, what is their signature dish? Uh, that uh, pile high uh, onion ring thing that they have. Uh, oh, the bloomin' onion. The bloomin' onion. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds different than Australian. Have bloomin you ever had one of the those? Bloomin' onion. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty no, tasty. No, I think we ordered one, and I had like one of the onion rings off it. But yeah, uh, it's, they're pretty good. Yeah. It's very greasy and fried, but yeah, I don't eat good. that kind of stuff anymore. So. I uh, yeah, I tried a pork rind today. Uh, microwavable pork rinds were at the bar, and I ate a one little tiny piece to try it out, and it was really tasty. It's essentially like a salty chip, you know, fried, yeah. fried chip. Well, is it, it's pig skin. Yeah. I, well, you can buy that shit in like a, like a yeah. chip bag. And I remember having some before. They just like dry your mouth out so much that yeah, I... Yeah, they're super salty. I ate like one or two, and I was like, eh, no thanks. Yeah. I've never tried them before, and I decided to try one before. Well, you microwaved it, huh? Well, I didn't, but oh. the, the people who ordered it at the bar did. Can you order them cold, or was it just... I don't think you would. Was it required to... Well, they were fried, so oh. they were... Oh, wow, that's They like were microwaved. Different... Oh, like that's like popcorn. fresh pork rind, then? They were the opposite of fresh. <laughs> I was going to say... Well, I was thinking that, and I was like, unless they killed the cow, I mean the pig okay. immediately. That'd be some fresh pork rinds. Maybe some good, yeah. Fucking, it's like choice pigs feet or pigs ears. Like I just never eat that kind of stuff. Pigs ears for dogs. Yeah, okay. yeah. They dry them out and feed them to dogs. I ice cream for my dog, but then they like a lot of them are soaked in formaldehyde and shit yeah. to to uh, increase their shelf life. So I didn't yeah. get those for that her anymore. Bad. Seems kind of just mildly poisonous, maybe. Just mildly. Well, how long is your dog gonna live anyway? I yeah, know. Come on. Come on. Like seven more years tops. Yeah, I've already started preparing for her death. I uh, oh, wow, that's fucking terrible. She <laughs> had a coffin already. <laughs> you, had her, you had her pick it and out. Then, like, like, yeah, sniff out the one you want. Uh, and then I uh, I sit in a dark room and just pretend like she's already dead for fifteen minutes, and I kind of cry a little bit and think about how much I miss her. <laughs> just think and about then, it. And then I just, that way, when she actually dies, you'll be like, mm, I've already, quick, quick I've already yeah, I've already like, I just need to cry for ten minutes, and yeah, I've, I've shed my like tears to a, a timer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've, I've shed my tears. Um, periodically throughout the years so that when she does die i won't have a ton in me to cry out that's how that's be, how my physical body drained. works yeah your i only have so many tears in these ducks i don't have like an unlimited supply so mm -hmm. all this is completely fabricated and made up on the spot no i think you're right i think <laughs> that sounds scientific yeah, you, right? there's only a limited like you only have so much blood you only have so much saliva they're just limited. It sounds like the line from a really terrible, uh, sad movie. He was like, I have no more tears to cry. Yeah. It's I've exactly. cried them all out. Yeah. 
No, you're just being weak. <laughs> Try harder. Stop being a little bitch. <laughs> Cry more. <laughs> How am I supposed to <laughs> lap up your tears without more tears? Fill this glass, slave. Yes, it is. Hmm. That's good. This is fun when we don't have a topic. This is kind of... Yeah. This is very fun. all over the place. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I almost don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what I do. I don't. I'm trying to think about it. Like, uh, should we talk about? uh, Should we talk about movies? Because we've both seen some movies lately. Um, Should we talk about video games? Like, Dying Light just came out. Should we talk about books? Because I just got through reading like three books in the last like two. By reading, you mean I just got through listening to. To me, it's reading. um, Reading is is like listening. It's a pretty committed act. So is listening, but not quite as uh, focused. I know, but it uses two different. Reading uses your eyes. Different mediums. Or yeah. fingers if you're Senses. blind and can read Braille. Um, I do that a lot. Do you? Yeah, I, I'm picking it up. It's a very difficult language. Are you really like trying no. to pick up Braille? No, oh, okay. no, not at all. Well, I mean, you sign language, cool. so I didn't know if maybe you wanted to be able to help uh, blind people, yeah, too. Yeah, I already don't work on my sign language enough, so... Yeah, instead you're doing this. You could be you could be practicing. I could sign this right now. I could just interpret this whole thing. Yeah, silence. well then they would have to watch the YouTube video because mm-hmm. it would just be an awkward silence of me going, uh, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> um, and I'd need like way more room than I have to do sign, or I could just, <laughs> just finger spell it out. Gesticulate. Like I could crazy. do um subliminal messages for deaf people watching this, like where I'll just be like. <laughs> Like, you know, signing to them, but you don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I won't. This guy's (laughs) (laughs) fucking idiot. (laughs) Like, like they can't tell. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. We can talk about whatever the fuck we want. How are you liking Dying Light? Uh, I love it. It's my my style of game. It's, uh, you know, open world, RPG, uh, first person, and, uh, you know, it's got good graphics. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. Yeah. I think it's great. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I, um,. It's pretty good. Like I think they did a really good job. It's a it's a pretty big improvement over Dead Island for yeah. sure. But my problem right now is that I there's been so many of those open world games that have come out in like the last like four months, mm-hmm. that, and they're all so similar. Like they, I mean, this one has zombies in it, but it's it reminds me a lot of like Far Cry and the yeah. same kind of stuff yeah. going on. And open world games tend to have that issue of um, they create this big beautiful world, but then they they can't for some reason write like a decent story to. Right, tie it all together, and then you end up just doing all these random fetch quest type things that are sure. just kind of tedious. Um, but it's fun. I played. It. I just kind of play it here and there a little bit. Yeah, I haven't dumped a ton of time into it. Yeah, particularly. It's definitely different than. A, I think it's a trade off. You either have a game with like an amazing story, like Last of Us, mm-hmm. where they spend so much time on the structure of the plot that they really guide you through and then give you these levels to play and they're usually really good but they're linear and then you can have an open world where you spend almost all your time with you know creating buildings and details and mm-hmm. they just don't have the time to and money to like also add this really intricate awesome plot line with really good voice acting and stuff like that. Well, I think the problem with open world games is people tend to get so sidetracked that you right. forget what the story even, even is matter, because yeah. it doesn't re- like it like the last of us it's all like smaller areas connected right. together and in, in like this uh, right. seamless kind of narrative and then you don't have a lot of time I mean there's like moments where you can explore areas but even while you're exploring areas they're still talking and it's still like building the right. relationship right. between totally, the characters yeah. but in like Dying Light for example it, yeah if I'll, you want to, I'll you, just, can you can just nothing. yeah, you can just yeah. run around and like talk to random people and yeah. do stuff, and so it's hard yeah. to. I think the only way that they'll be able to ever have a good storytelling in an open world game is they would have to kind of force you to go from story mission to story mission to open things up. Yeah, and then maybe like it is like a breakaway point in the story where maybe something big just happened. And then you don't necessarily need to go right in, like just let people do a yeah. free roam or something. But. Yeah, I'm not um, huge on stories in video games. So the open world um, and the fetch quest to me, because there's a lot of fun stuff to do in you know the climbing in Dead Island or Dying Light and. Um, the the melee combat is super fun. Mm-hmm. So I just like that part. Like, I could just keep doing that over and over again. So I don't mind that there isn't much of a storyline. Like, in Far Cry, I just kind of, like, went and took out all the outposts and mm-hmm. stuff. And that was the funnest part for me, was just kind of, like, strategizing how to accomplish one really... Did you even finish it, or specific. did you just do the outposts? And then no. you're like, well, I'm done. 
That means all the characters in that game, if they were real people, were like, oh, but you didn't help yeah, us. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's all yeah. these things you still need to do. <laughs> I, we're still trying to hold the fort here. No, I finished Far Cry. I actually no. finished through the main storyline and shot the guy at the end. Cool. Pagan Min. I shot him in the Pagan face. Pagan Min. Do you have an option not to shoot him? Yes. Oh, really? You can just, uh, it just leaves it open at the very end. And I think if you don't shoot him. He gives you a hug. And then um, you I think he just, he just, like you kind of are friendly with him and then I don't know what he does. I think he, he just like a high five and then he yeah. just straight to credits. I think he, he lets you um, bury your mom's ashes at the end where you want to and he helps you do it and mm. then if you shoot him um, it just like you just do that on your own or whatever. <laughs> and then you just have to bury your ashes by yourself. But the thing is he's like this horrible tyrant so why would you not kill him at the, by the end? You've already taken It's all about everything. being the bigger person. Jeez. Yeah, I've already murdered 8 billion people <laughs> on the way to get to what's him. What's one so, more guy, right? Yeah, what's... That's yeah. He's the one that was causing. That's the game I still need to go back to. After I had just finished Assassin's Creed when that came out, and I was yeah. just like, Ugh, I don't have another open world game in me right now. Like I just. They're so big. The moment you start it up and you see how big the map is, you're just like, Oh fuck, where do I? This start? is like a chore. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like I kind of want to go back to like the Metal Gear or something like that, where it's. It, it, you have really good strategy and you can like like because in far cry the best thing was like getting to an outpost and figuring out how to take it out you know mm -hmm. learning it's it's uh you know parameters and learning where the guys are and then figuring out you know like taking out the alarms that was the funnest part i don't really need the drive to the next outpost part mm -hmm. i just want to be at the next outpost you know so a whole game that's just like that just I would out, probably play outpost the shit out of him. taker down guy yeah, 2014. Outpost, outpost guy. <laughs> outpost um, guy. But I, you can't really get away with that in games. Well, that's what kills me about, um, about Dying Light. There's no fast travel. So I'm just like, oh, when they're that. like, oh, go here. Oh, man, it's all the way across the map. Now I got to fucking run all the yeah, way across. That is a pain. And I think the reason why they did that is because the only way to level up your agility tree is by like running and climbing and jumping. Why? So if you were just fast traveling everywhere, you would never get any uh, You of might unlock unlocked. it later. I don't know. I doubt it, though. The I, map I isn't think that big. I don't think... Well, there's a whole other map, actually. Oh, there's yeah, a, there's, a, then, there's a second map that's like, I guess, about oh, I the same that. size. So, um, But I was reading and I, I think that what I, from what I read that there is no fast travel maybe it's something a lot later but um i would imagine eventually it would just make sense like you've already got your agility uh, you know up that's like the final reward you get when you yeah. get, that's like the last skill that you unlock and then you won't want to play the game anymore because you've already fucking played it for yeah. ever um but yeah I, don't, I mean i i haven't played a game in before dying light came out i, I hadn't played a game on anything i didn't even turn on my ps4 in like a month mm -hmm. so i was just not playing and just um looking things up on on websites and just kind of doing other things watching some shows and doing a lot of exercising and stuff too so nice. I, if i can fit in some video gaming uh when i think the game is good i i mm -hmm. will do that but for the most part i get pretty bored with a lot of games yeah it's, well so many of them are so similar nowadays yeah. i mean there's very few, I think, that stand apart and are exciting and feel kind of refreshing. Like with yeah. Dying Light, I'm playing it. I'm like, this is pretty cool, but it's so much like these other games yeah. that it's kind of like not as exciting after a couple hours because you just feel like you're playing kind of the same yeah. thing with a different paint job. Yeah, I played for like four hours the first night, and mm -hmm. I just got really into it. And then the next night, I played for a couple hours and just stopped. And I was like, oh, this is a good time to stop. Mm -hmm. I was playing with a, a friend and uh, played some co-op, and that was a lot of fun because yeah. <laughs> other, other than the fact that I was following them, and he would just turn around and run the other way without telling me. <laughs> and it was like I don't even, I, you can't see what's yeah. going on and so you have to look for the and then he was just like his agility was way higher and his uh, mm -hmm. other stuff was way higher so it was, he was just mowing people down and leaving me behind with this like group of zombies that just all were so I'm just dying and I'm just like <laughs> you have no communication skills what are we doing um not that's harsh but it was like you know he was just running around and i'm just like fuck i'm not i'm just tagging along guy you know what you're doing here <laughs> um but uh i think the co-op is pretty fun <laughs> i've been going back and playing uh older stuff that i missed out on yeah. um because I didn't have, like, a Nintendo system for a long time, so I have a Wii U. And I've become a huge fan of the Metroid series, actually. Yeah. I always knew what it was, and, like, I'd heard of it, and I had seen people play it. But I'd never actually sat down and played any of them. Um, and those games are fantastic, so I've been playing a lot of that. It's uh, 
very like 80s sci-fi type mm-hmm. setup kind of like the alien movies and stuff and i love um i like the 80s outlook of what they thought the future was going to mm-hmm. be like so like 80s sci-fi stuff is i don't i've always just really enjoyed it ever since i was a little kid and so it kind of uh hits that sweet spot for me yeah um and it has like great gameplay. Metroid is a side scroller, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the old, the older ones were they were yeah. like a big kind of puzzle solving exploration mm-hmm. um, side scroller. And then the, some of the ones I'm playing right now are part of the Prime series and are actually uh, like first person shooters. They have all the same other elements. Like oh. you still do a lot of exploring and puzzle solving, but it's all from a first person perspective, and it's really cool. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I've never played any of those. Yeah, I hadn't either until recently, and I finally just tried the one of them. Because everybody was talking about how it's like one of the best games ever. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'll give it a shot. And uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. I think there's a lot of old games that I haven't played that people are really into. And I just don't give them a chance because I'm just... There's so many. There's, there's so many too many. Yeah. There's like too many games. Yeah. Constantly. Like I'm like looking at things that are coming up and I like track gaming news. Um Through a couple sites um, for like work and stuff so I can stay up to date with everything. And uh, there's just... Every fucking day, they're like announcing new things that are coming out, and you're oh, just yeah. like, Jesus! Like, how? Who in the world has time to play all this stuff? You, did? Yeah. it's just crazy. Well, I think the industry is just growing so much, and it's changing so rapidly that you have like tons of like you have tons of video game developers in tons of different mediums, like indie games and app games, and then you have big picture games, and then you have you know independent games for consoles and independent games for this and that, and then you have all of the people in its wake trying to figure it all out, which are all the, the you know, journalists and YouTubers and Twitchers mm-hmm. and, or uh, what is that other one? Um, uh, yeah, Twitch and there's a couple other ones um, where people uh, yeah, do, Twitch is like do the reviews big one. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so there's this whole new careers people can make out of just like talking about video games because there's so many going on and people want to know if they're any good so there's reviewers and then there's news and there's so much going on in it i i don't even try to keep up with it for the most part yeah I just, if it, hey there's a game coming out i'll fucking try it out. Yeah, looks, cool. Uh, looks, looks cool looks cool especially like app games those are just a dime a dozen there's so many no, of them. i don't even i don't, even, I don't even mess with those ones at all really yeah. so and and i don't have that much time anymore like between writing and doing other shit yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot more to do in the way of productivity mm-hmm. it, for me, you know, yeah. than to play every game that comes out or whatever. Well, it's getting to the point where I like don't finish anything anymore. I just like I don't even know if I'll ever finish Dying Light. I'll probably just play yeah. it a, like a few more times over the next couple of weeks, and then I'll, it'll just drop off my radar because I'm yeah. uh, something else will come out, or I'm just gonna get sidetracked. So for sure, it's like they flood the market with it, and then you don't really. Unless you just refuse to play anything else and just yeah. absorb all your time into one thing. Well, we have so many options. It's not like you can be like a hard. You can be a hardcore something, mm-hmm. but if you're not, I mean, if you have anything else going on in your life, you're not going to be a hardcore one game person. Yeah. You know, I like to try out different games that I think are really good and get an idea of how the uh, the gameplay is changing and the storytelling is changing and you know, like how much it's getting better every game. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, how big it's getting and everything, but at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and try to like learn every little thing about it unless it's Bloodborne or Dark Souls. Yeah, and those games are just like games. I'm just going to obsess over. I don't I don't care. I kind of miss that about games though, and I, I think it's just because I'm so much busier now as a person. But I remember when I was a kid, I would get I got like fucking stupid good at, at games because yeah. like we had a handful of them. We didn't have a lot of money, so it was like you just had to really make the most out of the yeah. games that you had. And I mean, when I was a kid, they didn't. I mean, we had like a Super Nintendo, and they didn't have games coming out every single week like they do no. now. Like they were very spread out, and so it was like you really learned those games, just played them repeatedly over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and I kind of miss like being so in, like engrossed in uh, different titles like that. I think the yeah. last game that I was that engrossed in was probably The Last of Us. Like I played through the yeah. game, you know, like four or five times. It was just so good I couldn't get over. It. And I would watch the cutscenes every yeah. time. It was just it was like watching an amazing movie that you got to interact with, and it was yeah. just uh, fucking incredible. Yeah. It was great. Very um, rare and very well done. Mm-hmm. Those kind of games. That's why I like Dark Souls. Is it's so hard and they don't hold your hand. Mm-hmm. And you really, if you want to do well in the game, you have to learn how to play the game. Yeah and be creative and um i just really liked getting really into it because in a lot of games it's pretty simple there's not a lot of consequences to dying yeah they just they and there's like a bunch of tutorials they always just point you which way to go 
Um, like they'll put little markers on your map and shit. Right. Like, oh, just go here. And, anything, yeah, whatever. it's just you kind of just feel like you're on uh, train tracks and you're just kind of along for the ride. Right. And I mean that's about it. But yeah, like in Bloodborne, I hope is is like that. That it's very yeah. kind of just the just you just make a guy, you're thrown in there, and you just yeah. figure that shit out. Yep. So I hope so. That's what's uh, nice about these Metroid games is they don't. It's the same. It's like an older style of gaming yeah. where they didn't tell you what to do. You just drop you down on this planet and then you just you just yeah. start playing and then you just figure it out as you Learn, go and yeah. you pick up a new item and realize that you can open certain doors that you couldn't open before. So you go back yeah. to older areas and yeah. um, it's really fun. It's kind of uh, it's like a different form of storytelling almost. Like you have sure. very narrative driven games with the voice acting and, and plot structures. But uh, games like Dark Souls 2, it's like it's still telling you a story, just like a di- in a different way. Like you're almost yeah. telling your own story right. through um, like what you do and the things that you experience. Right. Um, and it creates more of like a water cooler conversation with people too. When you're yeah. just like, oh, dude, I fucking ran into this thing and I died like so many right. times, and then I finally forgot this. Whereas like a lot of games. Like Call of Duty campaigns, yeah. you're you know nothing What's exciting. Yeah, about? you're just yeah. like, oh, did you I like that, that cutscene? Yeah, yeah. I shot and that one so, guy. Yeah. But it's also streamlined and yeah. uh, like linear. That there's yeah. not even in The Last of Us, as good as that was. The only conversations I had with people was uh, interpretations of like the ending to that game yeah. and like what people thought that meant and stuff. Yeah, it's definitely not as open ended as mm-hmm. like a Dark Souls, which was pretty much open world and you could go do other things and then you have lots of surprising outcomes and strategy. Strategy is a huge thing in that mm-hmm. game. There isn't a lot of strategy where you can have multiple strategies that are all successful. It's mm-hmm. usually just one strategy and that's how you get through a game or whatever. Yeah. Or there's they only allow you to do like one or two different things. But um yeah, definitely had um, probably the most interesting conversations about dark souls and Dark Souls too mm-hmm. yeah. people get so into it if you're into it it makes sense but yeah i think people get into call of duty and they probably talk about the, the i think like the, the multiplayer is yeah. where you probably are able to have a lot of those conversations yeah. like loadouts whatever loadouts you had yeah. and and sweet spots on whatever map that you right. found that yeah. worked really well um i just mean from like a single player campaign yeah. point they're so linear and so scripted that the experience is pretty much the same across the board for everybody. Yeah. And we've been playing video games for, what, like 20 years almost? Yeah, I mean, since I was four, so like right. 21 years. Yeah. Uh, f- yeah. <laughs> I probably started playing when I was like 10. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't have any systems until Super Nintendo, or maybe original Nintendo at a friend's or something. Yeah, it was my but, mom's uh, boyfriend at the time at original Nintendo, and that was like yeah. my introduction. Yeah, and they're so cool. And uh, I was a younger brother, so I didn't get to play it very often anyway. And uh, But we've been playing games for so long. I mean, what it just, you know, it starts to become a bit, you know, predictable. Yeah. So I think that it's something that I'll always do. Like, I don't think I'll ever stop. Yeah. I just think my in- my interest in it has waned a little bit over the years. Yeah. Um, and then oh. every once in a while, something yeah. exciting will come out that kind yeah. of, like, reignites my, um, kind of like my passion for it. But... Yeah. Um, I think it's called getting older <laughs> and maturing yeah. a little bit and realizing that in life you kind of have a limited amount of time to spend. So if you're just spending it on the couch playing a video game, you could be doing other things that mm-hmm. are more productive yeah. or more, you know, to, you know, experience life in, mm-hmm. in more interesting ways instead of just this over and over accomplishing digital goals, you know, yeah. oh, I've done so much in these games, but real life, I don't think you'll probably be, you know, super worried about that when you're on your deathbed or whatever. No, probably not. I can't imagine. <laughs> so, but, uh, it's well, hard I, not to get into though. And yeah. So I think that I just allow myself to get into something every once in a while, yeah. as long as I like get everything else done that I want to do. Like tomorrow I have the day off and I won't, touch anything fun until i run work out get my writing done Mm -hmm. like i have like a whole list of shit that i do beforehand and then once i get all that done and like i feel um like i was productive for the day and like got something done then i'll be like cool i'll just you know kick back and play something for a couple hours Mm -hmm. maybe watch a movie or something so um but I can't. I mean, I used to when I was like in school. I would just sit there. I would fucking on my like the weekends. That was my whole weekend. I would just sit there and right. play games. Like that oh, was yeah, all dude. I fucking did. My friends would come over and man, we yeah. just hung out and played games the whole fucking time. Mm-hmm. But I can't do it now. I just yeah I get uncomfortable sitting on the couch. <laughs> couch sores are like bed sores, but yeah, right. The new, <laughs> the new thing is the couch sore for uh, the 
um, sedentary gamer. I think they're great though for people who are like disabled. Like we have, oh, sure. um, you know, people who come to the store every once in a while who mm-hmm. like we have, you know, they're just disabled and they don't, what else are they going to do? I mean, well, yeah, some of them can't move around that well. Yeah, and, and their so, care provider probably can't take them to on walks. Every yeah. Fucking 10 minutes. So, and so I think that it's, uh, it, it gives people something exciting to do with their time. Um, if they don't have the ability to go do things themselves necessarily. Yeah, for sure. And it lets them interact in a world Mm -hmm. that they can't necessarily, like, they can't interact with this world in the best way, Mm -hmm. in the way that they probably want to a lot of times. And so that gives them more mobility, more control over a character, you know, in the game. So I could see that. I mean, that's great. And it's not like, you know, you don't learn things from video games. You can definitely learn a lot. Yeah, you can. I I mean, I I think we talked about this before, but I got really good at reading because I would play like those JRPGs, like the old Final Fantasy games and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was just tons and tons of text dialogue that you just right. had to read if you wanted to know what was going on oddly, and where to go. Oddly uh, translated. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I, like, I just got stupid good at reading just yeah. from doing that all the time. So Yeah. Yeah, I never played those games. Maybe that's why I don't like to read as much. It wasn't... <laughs> it, reading to me was always part of school, so it wasn't very... Oh, really? Oh, man, I've always loved reading. Yeah. I just never... I, I never really got really into reading. I've uh, I've enjoyed writing, and I'm not really great at math, so I don't know what my problem is. But well, math's not really. As in, like, I'm not really, really into. W- so we, I think you're trying to, a roundabout way of saying I'm kind of an idiot, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of stupid. No, I don't. Know. I don't think you're I stupid. Don't I think you just apply yourself in different ways. Yeah, I hope so. Keep I try. It. Don't worry. I'm. I don't know. I don't know. So we need to have a, like a self-esteem boosting powwow for you now. Maybe I'm just feeling down. I'm so I have been feeling down the last uh, really week or week or two. Oh, why is that? I don't know. Yeah, obviously if it's personal. You probably don't want to. No, I, I honestly am not entirely sure. Uh, hmm. I think I just go through uh, stages of uh, where I just feel like I'm not accomplishing very much, mm-hmm. and where I feel like I don't know where I'm going in life oh, like yeah. i don't have a career goal um and then i think uh, you know like me and my brother were texting and he was like oh what would you like to do with your life and I, this is a conversation i've had my entire life mm-hmm. and i still don't know what i want to do yeah and it's like so fuck it you know and so that kind of gets me down a little bit when i start thinking about that and then uh i haven't been doing very well at pool like during i'll be pl- i'll play fine in mm-hmm. practice and i'll like kick ass i'll win like every game in practice and just murder and do really well and then when i get into competition i put so much pressure on myself and i just start to, i just get really um tense and i just uh and i've been losing just like crazy like hmm. a lot of games. I well, I lost all five games uh, about two weeks ago. Um, this week I only won two games, barely, and then I lost all three games in my game on Thursday last week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'm just I, I can. It, it wouldn't be as big of a deal if I was trying really hard and I did well, but I lost. Mm-hmm. I, it was that I I had a mental issue. Like I just was thinking about it. Like I had to win. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. I don't know. What, there's something changed while I was playing pool this year, and I went to this, like, I'm better than everyone concept. Mm-hmm. So when I would start to play, I was like, I can beat this person. And instead of thinking about just playing pool and, and letting it happen and just letting the, you know, as much practice as I have take over, I would just... I would like rush shots and just get all, you know, flustered and nervous mm-hmm. and very nervous, really. It's really odd. I don't, I'm trying to get over it by under, by admitting it. You yeah. Know, by just being like, okay, this is what I'm doing. It's not, I don't know why, but I don't need to be this word. Like, what do I really, I'm, what, what do I fucking, what does it matter if I win or lose at this pool game? Yeah. Why do I have this like, like need to win? at these games now when before I was just like learning and I was just happy to hit in a ball mm-hmm. and now I'm like if I don't run the table I feel stupid it's really <laughs> dumb it's like I'm not at that level where I can even where I should be at all like confident to that level like mm-hmm. like um, overconfident or whatever hmm. it's weird so I've had a issue with that so and then whatever else is going on I don't know I just felt really self-conscious I think lately I think it's, I've dealt a lot lately with the, the question of what am I doing with my life? Like, where am I going? What? And so it's a fucking, it's a weird thing. It's, yeah. I don't, I don't even know if people, it must be nice to know the answer to that question. Like yeah. for somebody like, Oh no, I like, this is what I'm doing. This, mm-hmm. I have my career laid out before me. Um, cause like growing up, 
you, like, I mean, at least for me, my plan was always, oh, get good grades and graduate school and, you know, go to college and do whatever. And then I did that and then didn't like college. And then I just ended up in a situation where I was like, I'm not really working towards anything now. Like, I'm just, I've kind of plateaued out, I guess, yeah. in life. And so, um, like, what's the goal? What's the purpose? Yeah, like, Where I don't... Am I going? What am I going to be doing in five years? Mm. I don't even know. So And weird. I just uh, stop thinking about it. I just write and... Um, <laughs> yeah. Just whatever, dude. It fucking happens as it happens. I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I, I went through a, a time not that long ago, maybe, like, six months ago, where I was just really stressed out about it all the time and yeah. like freaked out and thought that I was, like, failing myself in some way because mm. I wasn't making a bunch of money in some popular yeah. famous person or something. Um, I think you just have to settle for reality that yeah. this is the way it is. And then, I mean, you can do things to change it if you want. Like you could quit your job and go hunt down some amazing, exciting new opportunity maybe and yeah. turn things around or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, it's funny. I think that it's, um, it's part of like our society now. You have so much freedom. I mean, I feel like, you know, what, a hundred years ago, you were probably a farmer, and so that was your life. Or, like, yeah, you, or didn't you just have, got into you didn't, yeah, you or didn't, something. You were a you work. didn't have a lot of options. Like you just yeah. had to do something. Whereas we live in a, a time now where there's so many opportunities out there, and there's so many different ways that you can communicate with people. That the question yeah. of like, what am I going to do with my yeah. life now? Is just a, a very broad and kind of scary thing because there yeah. is so many possibilities. It's not like a plan just laid out for you. It's something that. Uh, yeah, and you're not stuck with what your parents did, which mm-hmm. would be like a hundred years ago. You yeah. just, you know, your dad was a, a, you know, a dock worker. You end up just doing that. Mm-hmm. Now it's like you can do whatever you want, and you can see all these possibilities, and you can like, like you said, communicate with all different people around the world, and you can be like, oh my god, do I want to go to help people in Somalia? Do I want to, mm-hmm. you know, what do I want to do? with my time and then you invest in a particular career or college or something and then you find out that maybe that wasn't what you wanted to do or something yeah and then you end up being 30 and uh doing a podcast (laughs) in your living room with a a table and chairs it's a nice table it is nice i could eat off it i should just leave it here in the middle and just hey you don't fuck your couch just leave it somewhere else i'm just gonna get rid of it (laughs) just throw it away Mm mm-hmm you live like that lady that you're telling me about. Yeah, you didn't did have any furniture that? in her house. She just sat on the floor. Yeah, she just uh, sat on the floor and used a. She just like sleeps on the floor. She has no furniture in the house. Wasn't she like a, a scientist, right? Yeah, or like she's okay. a scientist interested in uh, biomechanics, like the way people move and, um, kind of deal with their environments in different mm-hmm. ways like how we you know we're in a house right now people don't think about this stuff because we take it all for granted but she was kind of going for like a um primitive kind of look like mm-hmm. we we you know developed our bodies and evolved based on a particular lifestyle that our you know pre-ancestor you mm. know, um bodies you know were adapted to and now we live in very different environments that we've kind of adapt like created around us like houses and chairs and um you know sitting in desks all day at work and that isn't what our bodies are interested in Mm -hmm. like our bodies are interested in almost constant movement and um you know balancing and we aren't used you know we weren't we didn't evolve to like walk on flat ground we were we were always walking on on dirt and grass and rocks and climbing and things like that so that's what she was like talking about kind of going back to kind of engineer her life and her children's life and her family's life around that concept of of uh, more like uh i don't know hunter gatherer kind of uh, <laughs> lifestyle it's like a, a hippie which is scientist. interesting yeah very hippie yeah. very hippie but i think a lot of it was really good and very useful stuff like to just be healthier and to eat better and to um not be sedentary and all that Mm -hmm. and then some of it was just a little bit over the top like not having a bed like i get that like it's nice for her it was like her her body would adjust all night but i think that you know there's a reason why we invented beds because they're goddamn comfortable and i'm sleeping in them and i have a great night's sleep and i'm hurting (laughs) my back in any way you know maybe it could be firmer maybe i'll have issues but Mm -hmm. i mean a good night's sleep is also a really healthy thing to have yeah so i don't know I don't know how far you want to go with that. Or not you, but, you <laughs> yeah. know, anybody who's doing that kind of stuff, but I don't know. 
But anyway, we sort of just we were like, oh, what should we do with our lives? And then uh, let's <laughs> let's fucking talk about fucking science about some other lady. Because the the truth is that the, you're you're scared to talk about yeah. what you want to do with your life. Yeah, I, I just know. have settled for um, taking care of myself, writing, and doing this, and spending yeah. time with my wife and my dog. That's just that's my life right there. And yeah. then working, obviously, so I have a home to go to. Yeah. Um, when I leave my place of work, so. Um, I think I think that you just have to settle. Like, not well. You settle is not the right word, but you just have to. Well, you have to admit that you're responsible for where you're at right now, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's okay to not be super rich or super specifically in you know a, a field that. Because I think we watch so much media that it's like. It seems like there are a lot of successful people out there. Mm-hmm. We don't see all the successful people that just kind of are happy in their lives yeah. with what they're doing that aren't on TV. We see all these people who like seem like they're happy or whatever. And I think it gives you this notion that like happiness comes from a certain experience or a certain life. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to just accept that your own life is great and your own, uh, you know, your own friendships are what matter. It's not about like looking and trying to gain something from somewhere else that you could never get anyway, because you'll never be satisfied. I was, um, there's like an article I was reading about like the, it was like the top things that you should never um, do in life. And one of the big ones was compare your life to other people's lives. And, uh, Mm -hmm. because then you're, you either just live in envy the whole time because you just want these things that these other people have instead of appreciating what you do have. Sure. Um, which I think is an easy thing, and I think everybody does it, especially like how you're saying, and you have so much media that you can digest, and you see all these like famous people that are, uh, you know, obviously they probably make a lot of money, and they seem like yeah. they have really cool jobs and all this shit, and then yeah. you just get wrapped up in that fantasy of wanting that as well instead of accepting what you do have and making the best out of it. Um, sure. Yeah. I've been trying to do that at least somewhat, like making the best out of mm-hmm. where I'm at now because, you know, I'm, I am I can control that. I can yeah. control what I do now. So I've been trying to take work more seriously and trying to um, take my dieting more seriously. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's been good, but I still get lonely, honestly. Well, I think it's just normal to have... I'm by myself a lot. <laughs> it's, I think... It, well, yeah. You, I really, literally am in my house by myself a great deal of the time. Uh, and that's fine. It's good. There's a lot of benefits to it, but at the same time, I get lonely. Um... So if there's any ladies out there who need company... <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, I don't know. Just contact Joe. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm desperate. I'm not saying any, any ladies. I'm the reason I'm alone is because I am picky. Oh, there you go. And very shy. And very shy. <laughs> I don't mind putting myself out there in this like format, but uh, to actually initiate a conversation with a pretty lady is uh, awkward for me. We can do practice runs on the show. That'd can be you fun. wear a wig? Yeah, I can. I can Please. put a wig on and. Yeah. Do some practice. Um, and then people could give you feedback, like leave comments. Yeah. Let you know. I've been watching the these videos on, like, uh, they're horrible. They're <laughs> really stupid, and I don't really like them. But I've watched a few, and they're like, um, they're kind of pickup artists that mm-hmm. are on YouTube. And I watched a couple videos, and everything about it is like, be yourself, but don't really be yourself. <laughs> and I, I just can't be. I, I have a hard time being fake. I'll be way more awkward than anything mm-hmm. than smooth if I'm trying to like do anything. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I like, you know, so I don't know. I'm just trying to be me. I'm just trying to well, be, yeah, just like, gotta be, be real you, dog. Be, be myself. And that's hard. I mean, I'm hard. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. That, uh, it reminds me of Lucy K joke when he's talking about how on a, uh, when you see a couple on a date, you can tell if they're on a first date. Cause the man is like, 50 different people on yeah. that date because he's trying just to like adapt. yeah because he's yeah. just trying to adapt like to this? whatever like she that? wants yeah. yeah um and the woman's just trying not to statistically be raped and murdered so yeah statistically that's what i, I think that i think out. the odds of them being raped and murdered are pretty fucking low <laughs> but i think the the perception is that it's a lot higher than yeah. it is um so but i'm Contact. not you know putting myself out there too much so fuck it just be lonely. Just be yeah, lonely but guy. I like having my own space and my own stuff and being independent. <laughs> <laughs> like the day. Um, yeah, I like the Independence Day movies. <laughs> and I like to be able to do my own thing. <laughs> it's tough. I. It's so um, weird. 
Yeah, it's tough. And I, I don't have I any like time. Like I, yeah. on my days off, I, I like have a routine and I like want to do certain things. And I, I'm busy with pool at night and I'm doing this podcast all the time. So and I work forty some odd hours a week or more. Mm-hmm. Where's their time? Other than having a live-in girlfriend like I had before, mm-hmm. I don't have time to go on dates. I mean, yeah. I could make time. <laughs> but, uh, but, what does that? What does that mean? What do I do? I don't know about it. And I really do enjoy having my own space and my own, you know, schedule and eating just, what I want to eat. You seem to find a woman who has her own professional career that she's pretty invested yeah. in, that just wants to hang out like once or twice a week. <laughs> yeah, I really, I just need someone that fits perfectly into my life. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Maybe you should make a dating profile that has this. It's just you just break it down very specifically. Well, that's yeah. I need just like a companion who's <laughs> totally like, like got their own stuff going on and their schedule happens to mix match mine. I don't know. There's I don't some... know what I want. <laughs> it'll you'll probably know when it happens. I know. That's it's I'm just, just it'll happen it'll and then fine. you'll just be like, shit, that worked out nicely. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that possibility. But I'm not trying to like manufacture a relationship that's not going to last Yeah. anyway. So, well, I mean, you're getting up there in age. You don't have time for relationships that don't last. This is the point where you got to commit dog. No. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. No, I think I you're probably right. And I think that anybody I find that's anywhere near my age is going to be interested in commitment of some type. I mean, it might not be marriage and kids, but it's going to be close. <laughs> it's going to be damn it's close. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I guess like thirty is that tricky age yeah. where it's Especially like you're not else. you're not even old, but you're just you're mature enough that you're not interested in messing around anymore. Like you, some people are. Yeah. I know a lot of thirty year olds. Well, probably, but <laughs> I'm not like that, and I never yeah. have been. So I'm not going to pretend to be someone I am not. Too much. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Batman. That's how you uh, break the news to <laughs> that's everybody. How I, that's how, a, that's how I start all my uh, yeah. That's how I start all my conversations with women. <laughs> I just start. I'm like, hey, that's uh, yeah, I like your shoes. I'm Batman. <laughs> and then she leaves. Yeah, because they abruptly think that you're fucking schizophrenic or something. Yeah, or uh, just very awkward. And you have Tourette's, but you just say, "I'm Batman." <laughs> mm-hmm. Every thirty seconds, I'm bat. I'm Batman. <laughs> no, I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. Please agree with me so I can stop saying it. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. my tick. <laughs> if you don't say anything to me, I'll just keep saying it. So, <laughs> I'm Batman. Um, fucking name. Well, I'm glad I could get that off my chest. I guess. Well, there you go. Yeah, thanks. That's out there for the whole world to hear. And yeah, that's good. I'm glad. I mean, who else am I going to... I mean, I can yeah. just not say these things and, <laughs> you know, and then bottle it up and... Bottle it up and freak out. Go into some s- yeah. terrible dark state of self-loathing. You know where I'd probably go if I was going to freak out? Outback stank ass. <laughs> <laughs> give me a blooming onion. God damn it. Give me a beer and a blooming. And now I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'll be crikey. I wonder if they would do if you went in... And just over, yeah. like you had one yeah. the whole time, and Arr, you just give me the bloom and talk like a shitty Australian pirate the yeah. whole time. Shrimp on a Barbie, mate. <laughs> Yar, Yarborough. Yeah. I think that's a good spot to wrap it up, right there. Yeah, I think it's, we uh, just end this. Australian pirate at Outback Steakhouse. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming over. This is fun. Of course, every week. Cool. Same time. We can look at the camera and say hi, goodbye. <laughs> Bye, you everybody. don't have to, but it's cool. It's cool. See, look, it's like a commitment. It's kind of weird. It's the end of the thing. They're gonna. If I watch this, I'm gonna, gonna be looking. This. I'm gonna be looking at myself if I'm watching the it, whole time. It's weird. It's like me from the past. It is looking you from at the me past. in the present. It's time travel. Mm-hmm. Time back travel. Backdraft. Great fucking movie about firefighting. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I thought it was mostly about doors and opening them. I think so. But <laughs> I don't actually remember anything about that movie other than they fight some fires and I think somebody dies that was somewhat important at some point. Fighting fires. <laughs> Backdraft. Um, okay, well, I'm going to turn off the uh, All right. here. So. Well, good luck and good night, everybody.